All right, guys, KB32 here. Check it out. We're sitting over here in the uh, northern office. Uh, did the Tar Heel Challenge this weekend. Man, I tell you what, and I will do a video out there. You're not going to see me shooting in it quite often. I might have to speed it up a little bit, but uh, the gentlemen and the people I was shooting with were absolutely amazing. It's probably one of the best squads I've ever been on. So when we do the video, I'll introduce you to a couple members of the squads and show you some excellent shooters. It also convinced me that uh, I need to go ahead and move to the open division because quad loading is not fun especially if you watch these guys just go to blasts down this wasn't one guy named mike we called him auto mike all right so another thing we're going to be doing uh here in the near future i got this guy right here this is a it looks like the acro from the guys over at aim point but this is the Siley optics this is their bear it's a three moa dot fully encased and closed went ahead and put it on this guy's a perfect host this is a duty weapon right here uh, we're going to take it out and beat the limit snot i'm not going to give you a pure review on that boy right there uh okay so what are we talking about here this is an article i found uh this is a gentleman named in Milheiser from vox okay of all the people in the entire world a new supreme court case seeks to legalize assault weapons in all 50 states okay a case on the court's shadow docket could strike down state and local bans on ar-15s and similar weapons now i don't know because i really haven't read this article i thought it'd be kind of cool if we shared it together my thoughts and prayers on this whole thing you know how i am so anyway uh let's get on in this thing so in mill millheiser is a senior correspondent of vox uh, where he focuses on the Supreme Court and the Constitution and the decline of liberal democracy in the United States. Okay, so liberal democracy, that's pretty cool. Supreme Court could hand down a decision any day now in the National Association for Gun Rights versus City of Naperville. All right, so we've heard a little bit about this stuff, so this is pretty interesting. A case that could legalize assault weapons in high-capacity magazines in all 50 states. First of all, let's go ahead and define what is a high-capacity magazine. I, I I don't know what a high capacity magazines because all my magazines identify as regular size magazines. Okay, <clears throat> the case challenges a Naperville, Illinois ordinance and a similar Illinois state law, both of which ban assault weapons, which the state law defines to include certain semi-automatic rifles such as AR-15s and AK-47s. Let's just say, face it, you know, you've got the state like Washington out there. Their ban was pretty much, they banned everything, which the state law defines. Uh, additionally, the state law prohibits the sale of large capacity ammunition feeding devices, which is interesting because again, what do we consider large feeding devices? Well, uh, I feed my dogs. I'm a large feeding device. There you go. But I'm in the. Uh, I'm in the. I'll be here all week. Okay, which the statute defines as long gun magazines that hold more than ten rounds. Oh fudge! I've got. 30 round magazines lined on my desk right here all over the place or a handgun magazine which holds more than 15 bullets can't hold more than 15 bullets okay the plaintiffs which include a gun shop owner and a gun rights group claimed that the two statutes violate the second amendment should the supreme court accept that argument and this is the important they accept that argument overturn and overturn these laws it would have sweeping implications for the entire country just like the Bruns thing, it had sweeping implications, but everybody invented a new law to uh, counteract that whole thing. So you're going to have a bunch of people. If something happens, they're going to counteract it. They're going to do all this stuff, and they're going to blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying. Uh, all right. Uh, should the Supreme Court accept the argument and overturn these laws that would have sweeping implications on the entire country, that decision would need to be followed throughout the entire nation, absolutely, which would most likely mean that neither any state nor the U.S. Congress could ban assault rifles or high-capacity magazines. This is pretty huge because we do have a right-leaning Supreme Court. And the majority of those individuals on the right side are pro Second Amendment. They've not, not that they're pro Second Amendment, they read it as it is the law. Okay? The right of the people shall not be infringed. Okay? Uh, all right. So, ha. All right. So, and he goes on to say, and there is good reason to fear that this court could, at the very least, decide to make semi-automatic assault rifles legal throughout the United States. In 2011, a federal appeals court upheld the District of Columbia's ban on assault weapons over the dissent of an up-and-coming right-wing judge named Brett Kavanaugh. 
So eventually we're figuring out where this guy sides on either side of the, the, the bench or the fence or whatever it is. So he's he's scared of the guns. Although the Supreme Court decision in the District of Columbia versus Heller in 2008 permitted lawmakers to ban dangerous and unusual weapons. Kavanaugh read that the decision narrowly in his 2011 opinion, he reasoned that the semi-automatic rifles are neither more dangerous than lawful weapons such as handguns, nor are they especially unusual among other things. He argued that the time of his opinion about 2 million semi-automatic AR-15 rifles have been manufactured. And this is true, guys. Uh, they are not what they call dangerous and unusual weapons. They, that is a matter of opinion. Okay, uh, if you look at the research, look at uh, the data, look at actual facts, it's a semi-automatic rifle, just like any other semi-automatic rifle in the entire world. It's just scary looking. Okay, flash forward a dozen years and Kavanaugh is now the median source or the justice on a Supreme Court dominated by Republican appointees, and there we go. So if he still believes semi-automatic rifles aren't particularly dangerous and unusual, he is well positioned to turn the opinion he wrote in 2011 into law. Yes. And I like that this guy's writing this because now we're going to probably see where he goes towards the end of it. And let's just continue. That said, there is some cert uncertainty about whether the court will issue a sweeping pronouncement right away about the legality of the assault rifles. I wish he'd quit saying, oh, those assault rifles. They said, those evil rifles that just kill, 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 kill. Bad, bad, bad rifles. Naperville case arises on the, the court's shadow docket in a mix of emergency motions that would expedite matters that the court sometimes decides without full briefing or oral argument. Shortly after Justice Amy Coney Barrett's appointment gave Republican appointees a supermajority on the Supreme Court. The court started handing down transformative, occasionally revolutionary decisions on its shadow docket. Okay, so, so I imagine somebody, if this goes about, somebody says something, it'll probably be leaked out just like everything, and then all the idiots will be out there in the streets screaming and hollering. Uh, in fall of 2021, concurring opinion, however, Barrett expressed concern that in her court, was deciding too many cases on its shadow docket, warning that the litigants were using the shadow docket to get Supreme Court to opine on cases it ordinarily would not hear, and on a short fuse would benefit a full briefing and oral argument. All right, notably, Barrett's opinion in that 2021 case was Dose, Dues versus Mills was joined by Kavanaugh. I have no idea what that means. So. There's a real chance that the court will delay deciding the questions raised by Napierville until a similar case has been fully litigated in the lower courts and the case reaches the justices through ordinary, more time-consuming process that the court uses to hear most throughout the country. Okay, this is a long article, uh, but I'm loving to see this because it is from a viewpoint, well, shit, let's just go ahead and admit it. Most of these people are on the left. They're anti-gun. They consider any firearm or you as a fun gun owner, you are a potential criminal and a potential murderer because you believe that owning a firearm is a right. It's sick. The court's Second Amendment decisions are incoherent and a textual. That's a new one, a textual. Okay, so let's, let's, let's read on. This is kind of interesting. The Supreme Court's Second Amendment jurisprudence turn a sharp rightward turn in Heller, which was the first case in American history to hold the Constitution protects an individual's right to bear arms. Heller and the court's later Second Amendment decisions are largely divorced from the actual text of the Second Amendment. Hmm. I can do some writing. I will tell you that. The amendment, of course, provides that, okay, here we go, oh, a well-regulated militia, militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Thus, unlike most constitutional amendments, the Second Amendment does not simply announce that a particular right exists, the right to keep and bear arms. It also states that the purpose of this right to provide for a well-regulated militia. All right. I got some arms. Let's do a militia thing. There you go. Uh, so evidently, so he's going back that the Second Amendment is all about the militia thing. Okay, not for you, the individual, to uh, uh, bear arms, but you must be part of a militia in order to do so. Or at least let me know what y'all thoughts are down below. 
As the court explains in United States versus Miller, 1939, the obvious purpose of the Second Amendment was to render possible the effectiveness of militias. And the amendment must be interpreted and applied with that end in view. Who the hell said that? As the court explained, the court explained obvious purpose. Uh, all right, so that's pretty interesting that this, he's bringing this in here. I'm learning a little bit every single day. In Heller, however, the court abandoned this textualist approach to the Second Amendment, holding that the actual purpose of the amendment is to protect an individual right to self-defense. Uh, as the court said in its most recent Second Amendment decision, New York Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin, uh, individual self-defense is the central component of the Second Amendment right. Yay! Somebody finally got it right. Okay, so it's it's the interpretation, however you can stir it one way or another. But to see these guys and how they do this is pretty interesting. Uh, yet, Heller also held that, quote, the right secured by the Second Amendment is not unlimited. It says that in the Second Amendment. And at this insistence of now retired Justice Anthony Kennedy, a relatively moderate conservative, the Heller opinion enumerated several specific limitations on the right to bear arms, including a rule permitting lawmakers to ban dangerous and unusual weapons. However, we just discussed that. Uh, yeah, how Kavanaugh was thinking maybe this is the most common rifle in the entire free world and it's not unusual. Uh, it's not dangerous. Uh, it's dangerous when it's in the hands of a dangerous person, okay? No one's talking about the crazy people in the world. They just want to put it on the gun. Okay, here we go. Bruin was a 6-3 decision that expanded the Second Amendment beyond the bounds laid out in Heller. It struck down a 109-year-old New York law that limited who could attain a license to carry a concealed firearm. You know, did you notice how New York just turned into a wild, wild west? No. Significantly, however, Kavanaugh wrote a separate concurring opinion joined by Chief Justice John Roberts which emphasized that several of Heller's limits on the right to bear arms, including the restriction on dangerous and unusual weapons, remain good law. Well, dangerous and unusual weapons, let's see, law rockets, AT-4s, uh, uh, Bangalore torpedoes, dangerous and unusual weapon. I, you know, you said you're drawing down the street with your Bangalore, you know, no big deal, no big deal, that's no big deal. <laughs> Okay, that suggests at the very least that the court's current majority will honor this limit on the Second Amendment right. Kavanaugh plus Roberts and three liberal justices form a working majority that supports bans on dangerous and unusual weapons. Ah, uh, okay, whatever. But Kavanaugh has also signaled that he reads the words dangerous and unusual weapons is very narrowly. I know this is getting long. Uh, I didn't realize I, it's the first time I'm reading it with you. So the court is likely to strike down assault rifle bans eventually. All right, if it does that thing. And I'm gonna put the link down below to this guy. It's a very good, good article. Uh, in his 2011 dissenting opinion on assault rifles, Kavanaugh, I didn't know he would been there that long, explained why he thinks that semi-automatic rifles like the ones captured by DC's assault weapons ban do not qualify as dangerous or unusual. They don't. I, I, I tell you what, we went down to the three gun uh, Tar Heel Challenge. Man, Donnie Flo did a great job. Mike uh, Sexton, everybody involved in that whole thing. And, uh, you know, American Defense sponsored it. Uh, the guys from Microtech, which, by the way, this is my favorite carry Microtech. This is the Scarab 2, and I love this thing. Okay, nobody got shot. You know why? Because we take that firearm, all right, and we treat it with respect. Okay, let's get back to this whole thing. Recall that Heller essentially nullified the first 13 words of the Second Amendment, the rule and ruled that the actual purpose of the amendment is to protect an individual right to self-defense. After inventing this new atextual right to personal defense oh i like that <laughs> okay whatever heller concluded that handguns enjoy special constitutional protection because they are the most preferred firearm in the nation to keep and use for protection of one's home and family hence it's correct Kavanaugh argued in his 2011 opinion that if handguns do not qualify as dangerous weapons then neither can a semi-automatic rifles of any kind 
And he's right, because semi-automatic handguns are used in connection with violent crimes far more than the semi-automatic rifles are. You know what? Kudos to somebody who uses fact. Oh, my God, this is a running log. Okay, he, <laughs> he has a point. According to the FBI, more than 10,000 people were murdered by a firearm in 2019 alone. And nearly 64,000 of these murders were committed by handgun. Meanwhile, only 364 gun murders were committed by a rifle of any kind. Ta-da! There it is. It's in writing. It is what it, it is, what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. All right. Uh, it's worth noting that, there, here we go, here's a rebuttal, but it's worth noting, here we go, it's worth noting that 3,281 of all the gun murders were attributed to a firearm type not stated, so it's likely that the absolute number of murders committed with a handgun or rifle is higher, because, oh, the rest of those had to be by rifle, had to be, had to be. <laughs> then the FBI's raw number suggested, nonetheless, the fact remains that if you only count gun murders where the type of firearm is known, about 90% of such murders were committed with handguns. Only about 5% were committed with rifles. All right, I know, I know. I'm sorry for taking so long. This is really cool, though. I like reading these articles because it gives me some insight on how the opposition actually thinks. And the wording of the uh, Second Amendment is where they're making their, stand, their stance. Uh, similarly argued that assault rifles are not unusual because they are widely owned by civilians. Congress banned assault weapons in 1994, but the law expired after 10 years and was not renewed. I don't know why I had to put that in there. As noted, Kavanaugh argued that over 2 million AR-15s have been made when he wrote his opinion in 2011. He also argued that the AR-15 alone accounted for 5.5% of firearms and 14.4% 14 of the rifles produced in the United States for the Michigan market. All right, whew, man, I tell you what, uh, I like Kavanaugh. You know, he likes beer, too. I do, too. Have you guys ever tried this Yingling Flight? Not bad. Uh, it's not like, you know, I like Coors. Uh, I was drinking Anheuser-Busch. What do you call that stuff? Michelob Ultra, but felt the need to dress up a little better. I don't know. Uh, there's plenty to quibble about with Kavanaugh's opinion. For starters, handguns are the most commonly used murder weapon because they are easily concealed and easily stored in nightstands and are similar location in the home. That's an opinion, but that doesn't mean that assault rifles are any less dangerous when they are used to commit premeditated murder, sometimes in a mass shooting. All guns are dangerous. That's the point. All guns are absolutely dangerous. And you know what all guns are meant to do? Yes, beside target shooting, yes, protect me and mine, okay? But in any event, Kavanaugh is the median justice on the current Supreme Court, so his views carry a great deal of sway. If he believes the assault rifle ban is unconstitutional, it is likely that he has the votes to declare them unconstitutional, though it remains an open question whether he will do so on a shadow docket. Okay, man, that was pretty cool. Uh, this was an interesting article, and I'm glad that it came up. I, was at, I think I found it. I was laying in bed last night just surfing the Internet on the phone. I was reading the news, okay, but uh, this is pretty cool. All right, so let me know what your thoughts are down below. Uh, this is a really good article. I will put the link down you can, so you can read it. I know. How many minutes are we going into this thing? Man, this is a long deal. Uh, but this is very important because if this happens, if it happens, do you think they will call and they will take the case? Who knows? But it's really cool. All right, what else have I got? Oh, so I won these down there at the Tar Heel Challenge. I will tell you this, the grab bags uh, were absolutely incredible, and this is something I wanted. Other than they were giving away Microtech knives. Uh, and next year, if you get a chance to shoot that uh, Tar Heel Challenge, do so. We went ahead and signed up for the Pro-Am. I uh, went ahead and said that. I've got the Memorial 3-Gun and the Fall Brawl. Uh, we're going to start shooting it out at the, the Carolina 3-Gun. Uh, I That's actually one this weekend, but no, it's too close to not doing weekend to weekend. My wife would kill me. So with that being said, guys, that's it. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. is freedom. is not free. If you made it this far in the video, man... Joe Biden, you are really fucking up. This t tonight, that Title 42 ends, and it is going to be a trip to see what happens tomorrow. 
Oh my God. It's KB32. I'm out of here. Y'all be good. Boom.